They say that 99% of the internet is not accessible to traditional browsers. The world that lives beneath that, which we see when we visit the dark web, contains things which defy normal understanding. It has become the breeding ground to all of man's most perverse and dark fantasies. It's a place where chaos reigns supreme. My mother's not an extremely savvy internet user. In fact, most of the time she has little to no idea of what she's doing on there. If she's on someone else's YouTube account or Google, she often does what she's trying to do without paying attention to whose credentials she is using. Can you blame her though? Her generation didn't grow up with the computers. They are severely disadvantaged when it comes to that kind of stuff. I on the other hand somewhat pride myself on being knowledgeable about computers and the internet. I don't know how I would have lived life without the opportunities it affords me. One could easily assume then that I would be someone who would take interest in the dark web. And believe me, it's not for the faint of heart. Now the thing is, I am very careful with what I do. I use a great VPN service and I know what I can and can't click on in order not to expose my IP address to anyone. After years of doing this though, I did however become a bit too careless and it just happens at the time that I did, I was on my mom's computer. I was hanging with my family during the holidays and I got into an argument with my little brother, Tommy, about a certain listing I had seen on the dark net, Market Search. He's always been a bit of a sheltered kid, considering that he has a cleft lip and my parents baby him like a toddler. So I figured that it was my responsibility to show him some of the real world every once in a while. I had told him about this listing for a clown that you can hire for your birthday parties that was for some reason advertised on the dark web and of course he didn't believe me so I showed him the listing. We read about how the clown would provide your party with an exceptional experience, one that you would likely never forget. Considering my knowledge of the dark web, I was pretty sure it was not an experience that you would want to remember. After I showed him, I got distracted and went about my business doing other things. Somehow though, I left my browser window open on my mom's computer. This was hands down the worst most careless slip up of my life, one that I'll likely never live down. After I was done on there, she used that laptop and, thinking that the clown was something that my little brother wanted for his birthday party, she went ahead and paid for him to come visit the house. After I found out what she had done, we tried to cancel it, but I guess it didn't work because that weekend, a clown car pulled up in front of my house for Tommy's birthday. Out of the car stepped an old man in traditional clown makeup with these pale bluish white eyes like those of a blind person, yet he seemed to be able to walk up the driveway totally fine. My mom was very freaked out and had my dad go meet him in the driveway. When my dad approached him, he tried to shake his hand, but instead, the clown just immediately pulled out three juggling balls and started tossing them up effortlessly. My dad stared at him for a moment in awe, then began to guide him around the side of the yard into the back, where the rest of the party guests were. I was definitely a bit worried, so I went in the backyard, and the clown was already setting up for the magic show. This guy looked freaky as hell, but everyone in the crowd seemed okay with it. So I suppose I was just being too judgmental and should just let him do a show. Plus, he had a name tag on that said noisy and considering he hadn't said a word the whole time, I thought that was pretty funny. For the first trick, he took a quarter out and he pretended to make it disappear in his hand. Then he reached around the back of his head and pulled the quarter out from behind his ear. It was a pretty basic trick, but then he kept going with it he pulled out quarter after quarter from behind his ear until there was a pile of change at least a few inches high off the ground beside him. Everyone in the yard seemed impressed when they saw this. It was really an incredible trick. Then he picked up the pile of change off the ground and put it in his shirt. He then held his shirt up with his two fingers and launched the coins up in the air, only nothing flew out. The change had totally disappeared and in his place a bunny rabbit popped out. The crowd really got into this, a few of them even got up and started putting money into his tip jar. Noisy then extended out his hand and pointed to Tommy. Tommy smiled, excited to have been acknowledged, and stepped up. 
Noisy then pulled out one of those huge bubble making wands and had Tommy stand in this round tray of soap on the ground. Noisy then lowered the wand over Tommy and lifted it back up quickly, covering him in a gigantic bubble. This was not an ordinary bubble though. It would not pop no matter what. Tommy would hit the side of it and it wouldn't break. Everyone in the audience stared at this speechless. Clearly they were watching something that wasn't possible occurring before their eyes. After a few seconds of being trapped inside the bubble, Tommy started to freak out and thrash against the side of the bubble. He began screaming and crying, panicking. Hey, let him out, my dad yelled as he started approaching the clown. Noisy then looked over at him and put his fingers to his lips, shushing him. Shh. He then lifted the wand above my brother's head and then quickly brought it down over him. The bubble instantly disappeared and so did Tommy. Frantic, my dad charged towards Noisy, but just before he could get to him, the clown brought the bubble wand over himself and vanished as well. My dad screamed frantically, looking around for the two of them. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the crowd began to stand up and try to help my dad look for them. Then we heard a car start up in the driveway. Several of us sprinted to the front yard and saw the clown car pulling out and taking off down the street. My dad, along with several others, got into their cars and peeled out, chasing after him. Then the clown car turned the corner, and by the time we got there, it had vanished. Upon the realization that we had lost him, my dad immediately broke down in tears, screaming and pounding on the steering wheel. I had never seen him get like that before, and I knew that it was all my fault. The following weeks were some of the worst I had ever experienced. Constant contact with the police and interviews, where everyone was relentlessly asking me about why I was on the dark web and what I knew about my little brother's disappearance. I honestly feel like I was lucky that they didn't pin the entire thing on me and just close the case. I didn't stop going on the dark web though. In fact, I started using it more. I knew that if there was any way I was going to find my brother's kidnapper, it wasn't going to be using the old fashioned police detective model. I had to track Noisy down once he decided to stalk again. So I created various fake identities on numerous dark markets and made postings after postings for birthday party clowns to come perform at my son's party. I was really freaked out by this and had to know more, but after I posted several times for him to meet me, I think he could tell that I was trying to trick him because he would never show up. I'm gonna continue to look for him as long as I can but I think he knows it's me, and for some reason, he doesn't want to be found. <laughs>